I can't believe the governor means what he says when he knows that, that by borrowing to the extent he's borrowing, virtually guarantees future tax increases. Virtually guarantees future tax increases. So if the governor is trying to justify his words by saying within the confines of this f four corners of the document presented before him uh, that he presented or the Democrats presented, there's no tax increases. One, that's incorrect. But two, it guarantees tax increases in the next biennium. This document that is supposed to say to the world what Connecticut's all about. And the document paints a very bleak picture. It does not single to pri the private sector that we are the place to be. And what it basically does is say we are going to continue what the road we've been down, continue the road of borrowing to pay operating expenses, continue the road to increase taxation, almost guaranteeing increased taxation in the years to come. We're borrowing for it. We're borrowing for it. And if you noticed what my Democratic colleague said just, what, nearly a half hour ago, it's killing them not to raise taxes. They actually said that they wanted to present a budget that pitches it so bad, so it looks so bad that the public hopefully will understand that if you want to restore aid to your hospitals, if you want to not have tuitions go up, if you want not to uh, 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 cut certain services, then the only thing we could do once again is raise taxes. That is a deep philosophical belief held by our Democratic colleagues. It is, it is painful for them to have to avoid revenues. I, with all due respect, and I have a ton of respect for Senator Harp, it pained her to actually say that. I think you saw that right in front of you. She would rather that we don't cut any of these things and that we raise revenue, in spite of the evidence that that raising revenue, as we've done by billions of dollars over the last three years has actually caused our economy to be further and further in crisis. This budget represents a spending increase of almost 10% over a two-year period. 10% over a two-year period. We are exceed our existing budget spending cap. We have a constitutional spending cap, and we exceed it by almost a half a billion dollars in each of the next two years. I think their redefinition of the uh, spending cap coincides with what the governor has said. Now, think about that for a second. Uh, we have a constitutional spending cap um, passed by over 85% of the voters. We define it in statute. Because we're unable to live within it, we just redefine it. And that is the arrogance of power. That is the arrogance of one party rule. If what you want to do does not fit within the rules, change the rules. We see that in budget. We see it with regard to uh, ballot lines. Uh, if it doesn't work the way you want it to work, just change it. Why? Because you can. And not one thing was done, not one thing was done to address the fact that as of July 1, our gross receipts tax, that tax that we pay at the gas tank, will be increased by 16%. This budget does not curtail government, it grows government. It continues on with the brand new agencies as the Department of Aging, the Department of Housing. It now creates a Department of Early Childhood and a Department of Injury Pre for Prevention. We are growing government by leaps and bounds. The Democrats in their budget just say, we're going to get more money from Medicaid fraud. They don't expend any money on extra personnel to do that, nor even equipment. In fact, in their own justification, they say there's been technological advances that will allow us to get $80 million more in Medicaid fraud. What if somebody just invent something we don't know about? Is it coming on the market next Tuesday like the iPhone 6, and all of a sudden we're going to save $80 million? That's not an honest budget.